Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now it has been a little bit busy in the past few weeks because I started a new job as a QA manager at a company that creates EV charging uh, solutions. But also I've been helping my kids study for their exams. Uh, but now we're back and we are going to test 2020.48.10 and see what what. But before we continue with the video, allow me to introduce a shameless plug here for the webshop that I've created, which supports all these kinds of t-shirts that you've seen me wearing over the past couple of weeks and a lot more as well. And I'll make sure to keep the t-shirt designs coming each and every month with a couple of new things, a couple of new items, a couple of new designs. So that should keep it interesting for you guys as well. So if you want to help support the channel, please check out the website via the link here or I'll put the link also in the description and any support is very much appreciated. And now let's get back to the video. Now, as usual, we start with our first test point, which is the downhill section of this uh, bridge, where it loses the middle lane markings. Now, let's see if this time it will stick more to the right side of the road. So here it loses the markings, staying on the right, staying on the right, only at the very end, a little bit more to the left, but that's only at the very end. So it used to be a lot more, I would say, this is an improvement and finally it is going straight on more or less so that's definitely a good point whoa what was that the car just dove into that side street for just a second that's not good at all not good at all now let's see how the car reacts at the roundabout, whether there's some improvement here already. So it has a car to follow, that's a little bit different, but let's see what it does. Beeping, continuing, and going straight into the curb there. So yeah, that is not good either. And I think we'll have to wait for the FSD to be enabled here in uh, Europe to be able to handle such roundabouts. Up ahead there is the dreaded S-curve and although the UNECE is going to meet in the next couple of days again, the agenda does not show anything about the lateral g-forces during cornering. So the only thing that Tesla can do within the limitations that it has is to slow down before the curve here now let's see if it will actually do that here we go will it slow down nope it does not slow down it goes over the line brakes heavily to get it back in check continues again on the line this turn seems to be a little bit better starting to accelerate and again a little bit too lazy in the turn so the car should handle this at lower speeds to stay within the current UNECE regulations now in some turns he actually does it and slows down it doesn't do it in this one so I have no idea why and I would love to have that FSD beta view to see what the car is thinking at uh, the point where it takes this S-curve. All right, let's see for entering the highway what the car will do. Now I have a truck coming up behind me. Let's hope the gap is large enough. It is braking and it is not going because the truck was too close to the car. But yeah, here we go again. The uh, I just initiated the uh, auto steer and the blinker is going again so that's definitely not good i still have no idea 
why it does that on some exits and why it doesn't do that on others. We're coming up on the first double exit. Let's see if that is smoother than before. It usually makes a double move, like halfway the exit, it corrects a little bit. Let's see how it reacts today. That was initially quite good. And a teeny tiny secondary correction, but less than the previous times. Now let's see with that second exit here, if it will do the same behavior. There we go. It waits a little bit longer for the exit. And yeah, there's the second correction. So that seems to be something that Tesla is not fixing or cannot fix at the moment. But they definitely should fix it. Here we have the second double exit point. Let's see how it fares here and whether it's also with that double movement. So here we go. Yep, slight correction when it almost hits the uh, entirety of the lane. Now here again it drives to the outside of the lane, get auto steer limited. I think Tesla could do a better job at steering in earlier. Now let's see if it will take the second exit. Should start blinking. Yeah, yes, 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 no, no. Auto steer is aborting here. So that is definitely not good. And uh, yeah, for some reason, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And it actually varies from update to update. Some updates, it's always working. Some updates, it's sometimes working. And right now it is not working. Now let's see here with that traffic light that is only for that lane that is entering the highway. If that is still fixed, no, it is going to stop. It is going to stop and it depicts an actual red line when I approach that point. So again, that is still something that needs to be fixed because there is no traffic light that applies to me. The same here, I can uh, actually do 90 kilometers an hour, but I do get a message that I'm speeding. So this is the same message that you get when you set the speed limit on the car, but the speed limit is definitely not set. I have rebooted the car. This is for the second update that this is happening. I have entered a speed limit, turned it off again, uh, because maybe there might be some flag hanging internally. Um, but yeah, it is not going away. So this is also a bug they introduced in the previous update and that has not been fixed yet. And we are coming up on our final testing point where it loses the lane markings altogether and the cars are parked midway in the road. So let's see, well it moves a little bit to the side for the cars. A little bit left right movement, but that oncoming car definitely helped I suppose. Staying nice on the right side. Slowing down for the intersection here. But let's see how it turns. Yep, that's clear, that's good. Oh, going to the middle of the road. Okay, now up ahead we have a couple of pedestrians that are walking on the road. Let's see how the car reacts to them. It depicts one of them and slows down. It is not going around them, so that is something that is exclusively for FSD beta. And I don't know when we will ever get that here with the UN ECE regulations holding back the progress on autonomous driving. 
okay time for another conclusion but before we dive into the details I just wanted to say that I also noticed that in the past two updates the car has gotten worse or still has issues with detecting orange traffic lights so when the light jumps from green to amber or orange it uh, depicts it as being orange for like a split second and then immediately goes to a red light while the light is still orange at that point so the car is still having some difficulties with uh, judging the correct color um, also something I noticed is when I'm driving on a local road and there's a uh, cyclist there the car will actually slow down even if it's a completely separate bicycle path even with some kind of green divider with some bushes in between it will most likely slow down a bit while passing um, those bikers on the other hand when the cyclists are on a bicycle path that is just adjacent to the road and they are driving side by side where it is really narrow between the left cyclist and the actual road where i will be passing the car doesn't seem to be bothered by that and uh, yeah it passes those way too close for comfort and I always have to intervene there so handling cyclists it is still something that needs quite a bit of work and perhaps it is also something that is typical for Belgium or maybe even Europe in the greater scheme um, the way that the bicycle paths are so close to the actual road now when talking about this specific update so the downhill section was a slight improvement there where it actually stayed uh, on the right side and it didn't hunt for the center of the road anymore just in that final second uh, it did make a slight movement but it was definitely less than in the previous updates as for roundabouts I mentioned it uh, before in the video I don't think we'll ever going to make roundabouts work without having the FSD beta so I'm really hoping that the upcoming uh, sessions with the UNECE will provide some clarity and will provide us with at least some forecast as to when we can expect this uh, FSD beta to uh, arrive here in Europe and when that will be allowed. The S-curve, same thing, still bound by the UNEC regulations. The car is perfectly capable of handling that at 70 kilometers an hour, only the regulations do not allow it to do so, so the car should slow down and Tesla, please look at this footage uh, because yeah for some reason it is not slowing down for that specific curve where in other cases it definitely is slowing down before the curve so something has to be wrong there the double exits that is still a uh, yeah a pickle because uh, it still makes those double adjustments or a secondary adjustment to get onto the exit there uh, and for that uh, second exit uh, on my second test point yeah as I mentioned before it sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't with this update it never works and uh, yeah it always starts or initiates that second change but then it moves back into that center lane at that point uh, for some reason and yeah because I don't have the visualization available I have no idea why it would do that so uh, yeah I would really like to have that FSD visualization to see what the car is thinking what object it thinks that is there or what lanes it thinks that it, that are there because right now uh, the information that I get on screen is just not enough to actually guess what the hell is going on here so yeah there you have it another update um, some improvement on the downhill section definitely a regression on the double exit but yeah that's kind of uh, how it has been for quite some time already you win some you lose some but in the end um, hopefully everything will be working drastically better by the time that we get FSD beta in our neck of the woods 
And as usual, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.